welcome back. Uh, now, a day at the seaside probably makes you think of seagulls and maybe some fish and chips. Yeah, the discarded plastic is actually becoming an unwanted part of the experience. It's estimated 8 million tonnes of it enters the world's oceans every year. Well, now a group of divers in Cornwall is doing its bit by cleaning below the shoreline as well as above it, as Caroline Rigby reports. A litter pick with a difference. An estimated 70% of plastic rubbish which enters the sea sinks, according to the organisation Dive Against Debris. So here in Cornwall, divers have joined forces to carry out an underwater beach clean. I set it up was just purely because there's a need for it. Um, I came down here with my wife, Rachel. Uh, we had a snorkel. Absolutely stunning spot. Really, really beautiful snorkel. Half of the beach is completely littered with debris. Absolutely thousands and thousands of anything from tiny little bits, which are really dangerous because they're the ones that get ingested, to large bits of pot and net. And it's a problem that stretches far beyond these shores. Scientists believe the world's oceans contain 8 million tonnes of plastic, enough to cover an area twice the size of London to ankle depth. While the amount littering beaches in the UK has increased by 140% since 1994, because much isn't biodegradable meaning there are an estimated 2,500 items of rubbish for every kilometre. So the beach also receives attention in an effort to preserve wildlife. Marine pollutants do have a big impact on the what's it, marine ecosystem, which the beach is an important part of. And so yeah, helping to keep them clean and remove plastics in particular, they're very hazardous to uh, animals and seabirds. As well as taking rubbish out of the ocean, Volunteers at Land Silas Beach are also putting marine life back in to help combat the effects of polluted water. The National Lobster Hatchery has released 550 crustaceans into this bay alone. The, the population is nowhere near what it used to be and we've seen in other areas of the world, in you know, Scandinavia and the Mediterranean and other places that harvest lobsters uh, like we do have had uh, big problems with their populations and, you know, in, in, in some areas they've become extinct and not recovered. All the litter collected by these divers will be weighed and as much as possible will be recycled. Caroline Rigby, BBC News. Eight minutes past nine. You might be forgiven for thinking that our next guest is being typecast. Not only will he be in the new Dad's Army film next year as Private Walker, the black market spib, but Daniel Mays is currently <laughs> starring in a play as a corrupt football manager. But he's a nice man, really, really honestly. Is, honestly. Yes. The Red Lion, which is on at the National Theatre, is about the greed and shady goings on of a non league football team. Daniel Mays is with us now. Morning to you. Good morning. There's football definitely a theme here, shady. isn't there? <laughs> That's my niche. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's interesting that we'll talk about the play first of all because a uh, great picture of you in it there. Yes, look at that huge picture. There's there. been <laughs> quite a lot of scandals surrounding football recently. It's almost like the timing. Yes, well, have been when, when uh, we had our uh, press night, um, the FIFA scandal hit. So, I mean, it was fortuitous for us. I mean, it kind of actually deepened uh, the the play in some respect. It became incredibly relevant. Um, but th that's what basically my character represents. He is the current manager of a non-league football team uh, and he sort of represents the greed, the manipulation and corruption that actually enters in at a very lower uh, league level. So you kind of have it on premiership all the way down, really. And Patrick Marble, who wrote the play, has been involved in football himself. He's, he's supporting uh, a non-league club. Really. Yes, he was... Uh, he kind of had a bout of writer's block, bless him. He had two massive hits with Dealer's Choice and Closer back in the 90s. Uh, moved to Sussex and uh, became sort of chairman of uh, Lewis FC. He kind of saved them from liquidation, really. And from that experience was born... The red line, so it, it's kind of given it a brilliant believability and authenticity. It's incredibly accurate, and it's a, just a wonderful piece of writing. Um, I love what you said about performing it as well in the theatre. How much you love just being in the theatre with a live audience? Yes, I mean it's it's two and a half hours on stage. It's a three-hander. Uh, it's a roller coaster of a journey each night. And uh, I mean, I love theatre anyway. Just that live interaction with an audience. I mean, film and TV is fantastic, isn't it? But I think um, with my actor's hat on, I would probably say uh, that's where you earn your stripes. At, at, the, at the National, it's a very sort of respectful audience, but we've been in the news today, Benedict Cumberbatch doing his Hamlet thing, yes. having a real problem with people taking 
pictures and that sort of have you ever suffered from that sort of destruction um occasionally you can see a camera go off which is you know i mean i, I the thing with benedict is that you know the 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 times and the mail reviewed the, the show after the first preview